Good evening, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from the capital of India on a rundown to the Indian Army Day, which is scheduled for the 15th of January. And what better than having a veteran to talk about all the young force, the youth of the nation, and how we are going to attract them to this great service called the Indian Army. And for this, we have with us somebody who's just the man to be here. He's a veteran para commando from the Indian Army and also a registrar with the university, with one of the universities in Greater Noida. And he, under him, at the moment, has a huge youth part. So we are here to talk about how the young people in India should be attracted to a service, which is the greatest service ever possible, the Indian Army. And welcome to this uh, chat with us at ADU, Colonel Yashtak Sena. We are here to just dissect every portion of what our youth needs to be in and why. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the chat with us. Jahind, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be uh, in this uh, chat show. Thank you. Jehind, and uh, you know, the most wonderful uh, th theory here is that we are beginning with a negative takeoff that uh, why is it that youth does not want to go into the forces nowadays? Okay, so uh, let's uh, talk of the, you know, the concept of go to tomb. So when a, when a child is born in any family, it's the responsibility of the parents to introduce him to what protects him and that's and that's where the army comes in so so it's a, it's it's the, the the start point is the parent then after he grows up he goes to a school so then it becomes the responsibility of the teachers and the 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 larger larger cross section of the people who, who meets him and then of course the most important thing is the is the society at large so all these three things make up to do to motivate a young man uh, from the age of 12 to the age of 24 to join the armed forces. Yeah, that is, the yes, that is absolutely. But um, is the growing corporatization and the industrialization reflecting into a lack of interest in the youth in joining the Indian Army? Uh, see, uh, uh, firstly, uh, the corporate uh, world uh, has been there in the Western world also. So it, this cannot be the reason why the popularity of the armed forces or the army is not there. Uh, let me tell you, if someone has to join the army, he will do so come what may. I mean, uh, we have got n number of examples like that. And there are various ways of joining the army. I mean, it is at a very early age. When you can when you can opt to join a, a school like an RIMC or a military school or a Senec school and pave your way into the into the army or the armed forces, then there is a, there are ways and means at the at the class twelfth level, where again you know it's it's a it's a matter of exposing one person at what stage and then finally at the graduation level. So it is it is not that. The opportunity is not there. It is it is the right exposure that the child requires to get to get the right motivation to join. And uh, let me let me tell you, uh, the pride come, comes in uniform. And uh, if someone sees a uniform of a soldier, I think that should be motivation enough to join the uh, join the army. And the uh, and the country uh, like India has got a huge tradition. A martial tradition, and uh, I don't see the reason that uh, it's because of corporatization that uh, the people don't opt for. There are enough opties. Let me tell you, uh, as of today, all our academies are full, flowing. There is a competition which is difficult, whether at the officer level or at the jawan level. Absolutely correct. And the fact that uh, you are a veteran and I'm a veteran's wife, we really feel that the need to motivate the children also within the forces uh, to take after their dads is there. But somehow, you know, there has been a very major shift uh, we see nowadays. What could be the reason for this shift? Traditional parental claims, a lot of these things are there, but we've all seen our children going into the corporate world. So, uh, 
the fact that they've been there, they've seen their parents, they've seen their father, uh, is it not motivation enough? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll beg to differ on this. Uh, firstly, the competition to join the army is a tough one. And what we see is a lot of people who do not have the fire in the belly in them will not be able to get through the strict measures that the uh, the selection board has so it is not it is not that the that the offsprings of the uh, veterans or the armed forces personnel do not join a lot of them do not get selected also so it's 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 not a fair one to say that a lot of people don't want to join a lot of people want to join let me tell you there are a lot of general officers whose children at the moment are in the army so i mean uh, i can give you n number of examples on this so the motivation is there uh, if at all a person is not cut up for this uh, this particular uh, service or this part this particular way of life then whether he's a uh, an armed forces uh, child or he's a civilian child it really doesn't make a difference yes you know? absolutely yes absolutely i think what you have uh, put forth is very correct and very true now from here we take off to what we wanted to actually discuss there is a huge population of youth in this country from the age of uh, 17 to the age of 24 25 and uh, you know many of them want to make a career in the forces we do not have a compulsory conscription in this country so how do we attract them how do we get the best lot into uh, the forces especially the army because today we are on a rundown to the army day and uh, we would really like to understand that uh, why uh, there is there is a dearth of officers in the army is is the reason that we are not being able to motivate the youth enough youth from any strata any background i'm not talking of a military background at all so how do we attract them See, uh, firstly, uh, you spoke about conscription. Let me tell you that uh, India as a country is a democratic country. And as a democracy, till such time, there is not a national emergency. Uh, conscription is not the answer. What is more required is the military temper in the society. The military temper comes with various organizations that are presently existing. We just need to give the right impetus. Now, I'll just come to the National Cadet Pool. National Cadet Corps is a huge organization spread across all the states and the union territories of the country, starting from the school education to the graduation level. You know, and if we have to, uh, you know, energize this organization, you will create a lot of military tempo into the into the system. That's what we need to do. Uh, NCC Cadet, as of today, if suppose in the new in the national education policy of 2020. If we have some credits for him, you know, in the in the, in his normal and academic syllabus, it will help him to do much more than what he is doing as of today. It will give give it more credence. So, uh, I mean, uh, we just need to energize the systems that we already have. I think uh, the National Credit uh, Credit Corps is a great uh, organization, and uh, if if that is done very sincerely, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to put the right temper of uh, you know uh, the military bearing into the in, into the organization and the society at large so i don't think conscription would be the right answer but definitely we have organizations we we can energize them to get things working that's the thing right, apart, from, apart from that apart from that there is a system that we have which is called the territorial army a ter a, a, ter a, a territorial army person is a part time soldier even if suppose due to whatever reasons he cannot uh, join the arm, uh, the army he can join the ter ter territorial army it's it needs to be advertised well that you can continue with an alternate career for the rest of your life and also be a practicing soldier as a part time so i mean these are the, these are the ways that uh, uh, you, uh, you know the or there are options available it is just that the uh, you know the right focus needs to be put into the into the youth that's right, it. Uncle Saxena, another important factor which we have seen uh, is a very uh, good uh, thing which has happened. Uh, we already have a batch at NDA with girls. Now, uh, you know, this is a 
an exercise which was long awaited finally became a rule became a practice it's now we hope it will remain a practice but tell me one thing do we need to create into the minds uh, of the parents that uh, their daughters can also be a part of the armed forces apart from the medical corps medical and nursing corps and uh, you know they can go into the forces so why not have a perception management exercise by the armed forces is that a solution to it and for this we can talk of both boys and girls i mean but i'm talking of girls because the number percentage is very less or uh, definitely the visibility content of the entire branding of the army needs to increase there's no doubt about it uh, there was a time when branding was not required the martial traditions of the of the society did the work but in today's world uh, you re you require to brand to brand the the complete vocation as such the army way of system as such and let me tell you with it's uh, you know it's for for both the genders the motivation level uh, at the moment is will remain the same is all is already there in fact uh, more and more girls have started now opting for this uh, for this uh, career whether at the graduation level or at the nda level and even at the military schools and rmc level there are batches that are training at each level from class 6 to class 7 level 12th level and to the graduation level so we need to yeah we need to uh, advertise it we need to brand it in such a way that it reaches every household and we need to be very clear uh, it is a there is no gender bias in the armed forces or the army in particular we we value the the uh, what do you call uh, the, uh, you know the devotion of uh, and sincerity of every citizen of india whether boy or a girl so uh, i mean i see no reason why this uh, you know this concept uh, should not become popular of having ladies into the army and also one uh, important thing which i feel uh, still needs to be done at the level of colleges and universities you are a part of a uh, system in the university and uh, there is a concept of career counseling when career counselors come from all facets of industry why don't we have career counseling as a major exercise taken up by the armed forces more so the indian army because the strength of the army is much more than the other two forces so why can't we have uh, some sort of of an exercise like this for the students who are actually at the moment planning their careers no let me tell you uh, this exercise is already on in fact uh, i was in touch with a batchmate of mine who's the director general military training we've organized uh, uh, you know uh, certain uh, capsules in the, as part of the place as part of the placement cells of the uh, cell of the university getting getting people to know as to uh, that armed forces is one of the one of the very good options that are available irrespective of what education that you are going through and uh, uh, in fact i can personally tell you that uh, you know uh, i am a prime mover for my own university to uh, you know to initiate uh, you know the uh, the people the students into uh, a career in the army and the armed forces uh, in general so this is happening yes we need to do more there's no doubt about it we need to have it probably you know as a as a uh, as a mandate given by uh, by say by ugc or by uh you know the all india council of technical education that yes um forces needs to be, need need to be kept as a uh, as a as a placement option by the placement organizations of the universities there's no doubt about it right and uh, we we are talking of officers since we began i would like to go a step ahead and talk about the major workforce of the indian army which is our soldier the men now uh, you know how what what is it, what motivates them what gets them into the forces what more can be done for them to come in greater numbers the fact is that uh, today we do have people you know there is a concentration of uh, military families by tradition so the child comes by tradition there is a parental claim sort of a thing and he says okay my father was in this pulton i will also go to the same pulton now apart from this how do we attract the skilled uh man par to this cadre okay so uh, let me tell you that uh, 
as far as uh, you know handing over the tradition from uh, one generation to the other we have a very good system in the army which is called the unit headquarters or the uhq quota where every soldier uh, uh, you know has got a right to get his uh, son or a, or a brother recruited into the into his own regiment so that uh, that is still continuing and is very heavily subscribed as far as the uh, jawans are concerned uh, apart from that in the society uh, if you know for getting uh, for uh, initiating uh, people to to get initiated into the army what is uh, you know what is happening is that you have this uh, new scheme which is uh, you know uh, famously called the agnivir scheme and in in the agnivir scheme we have a system of uh, giving an exposure of the army for four years after after four years a lot of people will go out and they are our ambassadors in the society to get more and more people you know it's a it's a traction in the society where more people go out, more people get attracted into the service so uh, this this will, will be a continuing process that is the uh, that is the thing but tell me one thing when we take youth from the agni veer they know they are there for four years and we take youth who come with uh, a sort of a permanency uh, the routine entries now uh, does that make it a little different for the youth to decide that okay i am coming only for four years so my motivation levels are different do their morale boosting needs a different level altogether are they supposed to be a part of the same uh, system same army same pulton so why have a different nomenclature for them and make them feel different so these two sets of youth would feel different uh see uh, uh what what needs to be done is to, to you know we need to study this system this scheme the agni veer scheme in totality in the agni veer scheme uh the recruitment system remains the same the recruitment pattern remains the same at at the end of 3 years what happens is that only 25% on the fourth year will get their permanent uh, you know the the, the permanent uh, enlistment into the army that is a motivation enough for the people for the balance 75% who not made it it's it's actually an agni the agni veer system is is a motivator for everyone to perform in the army so that if you don't perform then you actually have to go out so that that's a that's a motivator actually okay but then for somebody who's performed exceedingly well also goes out after four years is that so uh it's see uh, it's a it's a very fair and square system which the army at quota has made where 25% will be uh, will be selected and kept and the balance 75% will go out with some some sort of a remuneration remuneration and some incentives those incentives let me tell you it's a very nascent organization nascent scheme it is it is taking its time to mature let me tell you the incentives will be what will be much more than what it is as of today so we i mean uh, the the government uh, of the day is uh, you know is, is sitting together and getting things done uh, i i am aware that lot of organizations all across the board have sat together and and decided as to what you know when the people go out how best can we utilize them they are uh, they are well very well skilled and uh, uh, i mean they can be utilized in the society for various various things and let me tell you the 75% uh, people who will go out you know will change the complexion of the society you will find a more disciplined society they will go into the police forces they will go into the paramilitary forces they will go into the banks they will go into uh, government service you will find the difference there so it's not just this is a there's a grandiose plan in this entire thing which i mean uh, if you study the system which is there in the us army every politician or in the in the western in the western world has done some sort of a tour of duty at some stage and it's taken as a pride so this is going to be something as compared to that you know and that's how that's how the the pride in the you know in the in the uh, uniform is going to come in the society so this is a, a huge scheme which has got implications all around in the society it's not specific to only the armed forces let me tell you that so agni veer is a is a brilliant idea it will take its time to mature let's give it time and i'm sure things will things will come up in good shape absolutely i think i think that's so well put 
because uh, normally you know when we talk about the scheme we always talk about it with a negative uh, stance i think it's been very nicely put we should give it a chance let's see and yes i uh, uh, agreed absolutely you have a president in america who's also done his tour of duty absolutely. and uh, you you've uh, and i'm taking absolute pride in it there's no doubt about it anybody would now i uh, there is a concept of the government of india where it has a national skills development council and under the council they have various councils for all sectors now in as a part of this they are training youth which is 10th uh, fail and 7th uh, pass you know that sort of a concept where they give they skill these youth and want them to come and uh, you know work now is there a way such skilled youth can be absorbed uh, through the national skills development council and its various councils into the forces especially into the indian army which has all sort of trades under it so uh, we, we uh, what uh, i mean uh, uh, the system at the moment is that uh, already registration with the national skill development council is taking place for all our skills all the skill sets that are available that uh, that a person gets trained in the in the indian army and the navy and the air force it uh, they are all getting mapped they are all getting registered in that so that once they uh, they leave the forces those those uh, that registration is there that certification is there for them to be absorbed into into the society i will let me tell you every kind of skill that you can think of is available with the army you talk of mundane skills like uh, i mean uh, uh, food craft or you talk of uh, uh, blacksmithy or you talk of woodwork or you talk of masons you talk of electricians you talk of uh, auto mechanics everything is available in the indian army let me tell you so all this thing is is being mapped they are they are being duly certified and then once the certification is there then that this skill is available to the environment to absorb i mean in fact that is what is going to happen after 4 years uh, for the agni veer this uh, the skill, the national skill development council uh, along with the ministry of defense will uh, uh, you know get the get, get these people the right and the right employment opportunities in fact and that that is how how it's going to work so there is a lot of synergy that is that is required and this is being done let me tell you this is just not a baby of the ministry of defense it is the it is it is the responsibility of the complete union of india that here is a set of people who will be coming out of the four, after uh, after four years having done their two tour of duty for the defense of the country they are skilled and they need to be employed and let me tell you that is already being there that is being done so that once they come out they are useful to the society in many other ways that that is what is going to that is what is actually on the not only the drawing board it's already coming to coming to action right right absolutely and uh, uh, you know kal saxena beyond this uh, when we talk of uh, when we have these discussions in mind we also talk about uh, you are a rimcolian and you know that uh, you grew up in the dangal now uh, we have we have the questions which come forth through military schools and through uh, the rmc or through other uh, the senic schools now there is a concept where uh, all these schools have together put forth a you know projection for the future officers of the army now tell me one thing when we do such things can we just limit ourselves to let's say uh, 40 50 of such schools in a country of the size length and breadth of india so is there a methodology by which we could also encompass other schools in all states you know army as a tradition is very high in some states in india but very minimal in some states in india how can we make it in uh, you know where any school could uh, you know train for these things so could we could we have some sort of a thing which could work uh, it's a very uh, you know uh, an idea which is very just a little nascent idea in my mind but then uh, the fact is that we like to encompass everybody in this path of uh, you know the security of the nation so why just have 40 50 schools why not have more numbers yeah so uh, let i was uh, in the beginning of the interview i was uh, talking about the national credit score 
the uh, the entire country is uh, you know is mapped as far as the ncc is concerned the national cadet corps is the is actually the uh, the ground work for any soldier because it start it starts with basic military traditions that are imbibed into a child at a young age so that it further you know manifests into a person joining the armed forces the army uh, per, uh, per se so that's a very good scheme we need to we need to spread it even further we need to make it more relevant in the uh, in the curriculum in the uh, you know the in the new credit system the national education policy has to imbibe it so that it becomes a relevant part of the curriculum of all the schools that are there it encourage it should encourage the schools to have ncc and let me tell you ncc is a concept that can that can actually spread the word of of the relevance of uniform in the country so through through this organization i think we can do it uh, apart from that the ministry of defense has already uh, you know taken out a project of having more scenic schools basically the concept is that you convert various schools as scenic schools in the public private partnership this is already in the angle and if that happens then you will have larger number of people there are some private organizations that are doing it uh, you know on the lines of rimc uh, scenic school and military school and pro- probably some more will come up once the scheme uh, is uh, you know put into practice where there's a public private partnership to have more and more scenic schools on this model right now what is happening is all the scenic schools have got a M- uh, ministry of uh, that is a, uh, the government of india and the state government partnership which will which will now change to public pri- private partnership and then uh, you will see larger number of schools having uh, you know this kind of an environment to work in right that's exactly what i was trying to get to that you know uh, why not have a uh, large number of schools becoming a part of the mod uh, you know under the umbrella of mod not for any other thing but for just getting the right sort of training right sort of uh, curriculum inculcated so that you know the attraction towards the forces is natural uh, yeah, it's 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 on the on the angle and uh, in fact uh, the government has announced it in one of, in one of its uh, uh, schemes that they are going to do it and uh, it should happen in uh, you know sooner sooner or later right and uh, as and when we move towards the end of our discussion one very uh, you know important thing which uh, i has become a part of all youth conversations we are a part of is that uh, any other profession uh you know how did you train for preparation of this profession you want to go into the ias you have a ias training academy you want to go into any any other profession you want to do mba you want to do medical you got your akashas of the world you got for every profession training establishments run by the private sectors to uh, train the youth to join that service now everywhere it is taken as a positive thing in the forces when the youth says at the ssbs i trained well uh, it is a general reaction that uh, he says i got rejected because i said i got trained why is it so why can't we have this pre entry training taken as a positive thing for the youth of the nation okay uh, firstly let me uh, tell you that this is a misconception in today's world Uh, where connectivity and uh, you know internet is there down to everyone's house uh, everyone tries to train himself for the impending task so that there is no fear of unknown let's let me tell you it is taken as a very positive step as far as coaching and training is concerned there is no harm in getting coaching or training done at whatever stage you want to get it done and there is no negativity in that i have uh, uh you know had the experience of speaking speaking to people in the director general uh, uh recruitment a number of times and uh, i have spoken to a lot of batchmates of mine who are who have been group testing officers interviewing officers psychologists there is no harm let me tell you what what uh, you know the, dif- the there's a difference between coached and trained and and there is something called getting into a mo- into one particular artificial mold so if a person gets into an artificial mold 
that artificial mold will be broken in the five days of grueling services selection board let me tell you so if a person says that i get up every morning at 5 o'clock and go for a run now he cannot just imagine he has to do it so that is that is what is the training all about now if you if you want to do this training only for two months or a month and then you when you go to the ssb and then you say that okay i i i get up every morning or i have a routine for myself the person who interviews you has interviewed 10000 people it's very easy to find out whether he does it or he doesn't do it so actually getting into the getting into the army mold is very important rather than getting into an artificial mold a mold which is just there for 5 days it is not possible because you'll be caught so that i my uh, you know the message to all the youth who are trying to join the army is there is no harm in getting coached or trained wherever whatever opportunity you have you have it online do it you have a friend of yours you have an uncle of yours in the forces go and find out as to what is there there's no harm it's it's knowledge get knowledge of of whatever is going to come up that's there's no harm in it the only thing is once you know what it is you have to train yourself you have to train your personality it takes time for that so yes. get it as part get it as part of your system i mean that is that is that is what it is you can't you can't do it overnight that you say that uh, uh, you know i have got coached and now whatever the coaching has told me i will do exactly that no it doesn't happen that way it is right. it is a process it is a process absolutely so, so anyone who has this inhibition just remove this inhibition training coaching uh, trying to get online coaching whatever there's no harm in it right and it, it was actually wonderful speaking and if there is a point we have not discussed cuz the sena i would be happy that you put forth for the youth of the nation keeping army as a career uh, is there something which we missed out on you can always go ahead with it uh, let me tell you uh, the army is a way of life the army is what every citizen owes the defense of the country is the most important thing your own the the security of your countrymen comes from the few good men who work outside while you are you know well within your uh, you know uh, safety so if someone gets an opportunity to do it i think it will be an honor for him or her go go out try out and look and uh, you know aim aim for the sky that's what i can say i think this can they can be nothing better than a career in the armed forces and the army in particular and on this uh, particular note uh, we have the army day that is uh, we are celebrating the army day let me tell uh, let me salute all my uh, brothers in arms a lot of them have uh, have been killed in action and uh, i salute their their next of kin their parents their uh, close uh, close ones who uh, you know who've given up given their best and given uh, you know their everything for the defense of this country i think we owe it to each one of them my uh, message to each one in fact not only to the youth to the citizens of india is that respect the uniform the uniform will protect you from all adversaries thank you so much that was wonderful i think it's such a lovely conversation to have where we have such a huge man power which is our youth waiting to be tapped and what better than a force like the indian army what better a service than the indian armed forces and with on this note thank you so much kal sena for be having been a part of this chat with us we really hope that as and when we proceed and come up with other events we'll really want to focus on the youth of the nation to try and take up a career which is a matter of pride for every citizen in this world thank you so much thank you sangeeta thank you so much jai hind jai hind